Okay, so Sheridan and Jordy, you want to tell us what happened since you first hit the yellow, maybe? Okay. So the yellow was pretty empty. Um, you said it was that loss. Yeah, right. so it's Sea Horizon Fill, so it means it's below the BT. You guys have been coring down to the BT, and we're not making it go through it, but below the BT, there's a Sea Horizon, um, and that's what this yellow stuff is from that they are hitting down here. So this, it was pretty empty of artifacts, um, and so we got through it pretty quickly. And then there's a thin sand layer you can see in that side. Mm -hmm. um, and then we hit a uh, dark brown layer um, that started to, we started to get more artifacts. Um, lots and lots of them. So we knew we were yeah. back in like basket load fill. And then we hit the mid end really quickly after that. So the Sea Horizon stuff was probably basket loaded as well, but because it's all the exact same color, it's just getting dumped on top of one another and you're not seeing those individual lines of the basket loads, but it's probably, I mean, there's not many other ways that they were bringing it up here. So it was probably still basket loaded. Right. Um, we had initially approached it as like arbitrary, just like 20 centimeter levels. But when we got to the yellow, we decided to follow it since it was pretty obviously a floor. We had sherds laying flat, which was another like indicator of a floor surface. So Kyle and I, chase that surface and then found if you guys see like in this corner it basically just like made this huge pit and we had like kind of like a almost like a canyon valley thing going on oh, that's right yeah the yellow um, layer which was so hard to clean out mm -hmm. um so that was really interesting because we were trying to figure out what happened there like why would you have a floor like surface with this less and like still not have a flat surface because like that's what you would want for like the floor or something um and then once we took out all of that yellow um we were digging and then kyle realized that there was sand and then not only was it sand but it's pure sand which means that they're getting it from somewhere because there's like nothing in it it's just sand um but that was another indicator for us to like once we cleaned it off, we were able to reveal the black underneath. So that was another good practice for chasing a surface. Um, and then when we went down, there seemed to be like black and then like or an organic layer, more black and then the midden and the north end, whereas we had sand black and then more of like an ashy clay layer. So we've been kind of approaching the two halves separately, which is why you guys are doing, we're doing water uh, water screening for the north half and then water screening for the south half because I mean we're finding for instance deer bone and bull but like there's a heavy pocket of like organic matter kind of where we've been pulling a lot of deer bone over here and then like there's some other shirts and like bigger pieces of shirts that are coming from over here so we can always like Meg said we can always lump it later but we're splitting for now just to be safe what do you guys think the canyon through your yellow was um can we share what what the kind of consensus was from like everyone okay yeah, absolutely um so basically since the canyon appeared in the yellow and then there was also the sand and then the black which also had a canyon or like a crevice like a depression on this corner the northeast corner um so it's a different corner but it was still a depression and we always we've been seeing a lot of basically general south to north down sloping generally um so we were trying to figure out did something erode and then they tried to build on top of that or did they build and then it eroded so um one of the things that was brought up was like basically they had the same problems with erosion that we do which is interesting like some type of slumpage yeah yeah, so we see when we look at mounds now, um, every once in a while we'll see a big chunk of the mound that just sort of slumps off or an erosional gully starts into it and then that causes erosional problems. And this really looked, I mean, the only explanation we have for this right now would be that sort of erosional issue. But what's really interesting to me is it seems like the issue started in the black, then they went ahead and they covered it with the sand, and then they went ahead and they covered it with the yellow, and then it happened again. <laughs> and then, you and know, worse, so actually. there, yeah, it happened worse. Yeah. The yellow one was even worse than the, the black one. So I think that, you know, they, it does show that these dirts are hard to work with. And I think one of the really interesting things about this, um, 
is that it sort of gives you the impression that, that these people were really incredible engineers, that they sort of saw that problem, tried to fix it, didn't necessarily succeed the first time, tried to fix it again, and then, you know, you look at the mound, they've constructed on top of it at this point, and they took it up three or four more meters past that. So they do seem to have solved their erosional problem at some point, but, you know, it took them a couple of tries, and um, when we've got an amount eroding away at this point, we, do, we don't tend to ever succeed in stopping it. So the engineering that we're seeing in this unit is really quite impressive. Kyle, do you want to add anything? Uh, the only thing that I would add, sorry, Tom, I'm way behind you, and I'm going to come this way so I can point to what I'm going to talk about. <clears throat> but one of the, um, I think, most interesting things that we found this past week is that last week we had shown you how in this corner over here there's a, um, the, the wash. Um, right where, up here. Yeah, basically right if you follow the northwest um, nail down to the, to the alternating uh, light and dark bands. Well, it turns out we found another one down here in the uh in the south section um right below my finger yeah. so that's immediately so that those two events sort of like cap the uh, basket loading at least in that section you know bound it on both sides very clearly suggesting that there was an open surface on top of the yellow stuff mm. for at least a little while anyway each of those little individual lines that shows up in there would be the equivalent of like one rainstorm so to amass 20 to 30 of those lines, that surface had to be open for at least 20 to 30 rainstorms, pretty significant rainstorms. So mm -hmm. kind of shows that it was open for a good chunk of time. Um, and depending on the year, you know, potentially even a couple of months. So anything else to add? Are we good to move on? Can I ask another question about the sea horizon? Of course. Okay, so you said the sea horizon was below the BT. Does that mm -hmm. mean they went through a BT here? Or this is somewhere else's sea horizon that was moved? It was something else, some other place's sea horizon that was moved here as fill. Oh, okay. So they were like digging up sea horizon soil somewhere, either out of a borrow pit where they'd already dug mm -hmm. through that AEBT that you guys are looking for yep. in the cores, or that they were digging off the side of a bluff where the AE and BT is well above them and they're digging out sort of, you know, like a quarry around the other side. So no, this is not in place sea horizon, okay. it's sea horizon fill, um, meaning that we can tell where that sea horizon soil was coming from generally in the sort of the geographic and the geologic um, levels that we have here, but we don't know exactly where they were getting it from, but definitely not in place here. Good question. Any other ones? All right. <laughs>